This short video will explain the different ways you can collaborate and share documents within Office 365. Office 365 is a range of apps and software that work across multiple devices to help you be more productive. You can access these services from your computer, from your phone or from your tablet. During this video, I'm going to show you three different places to collaborate and store documents in Office 365. I'm going to talk about OneDrive, SharePoint and Teams, and you can launch them all from the waffle in the Office 365 portal. OneDrive is your own personal storage area and you can upload and store documents in there. And at the moment, you can see all the documents in my OneDrive are marked as private, which means they're just mine. I'm going to open up one of those documents, which is a PowerPoint presentation I'm working on, because on this document, I want some help from a colleague. Now, I've started out the slides, but I want his input on this particular one. So I'm going to go and hit share and I'm going to type the name of the person who I want to share this file with. What sharing does is allows that person to get edit rights on my file. It doesn't send them a copy, it gives them access to my original file, which they're going to be able to work directly into. So I've asked, please add some contribution onto slide three. I've sent it and then at that point, they're going to receive an email with a link to my file and be able to have edit rights to that file. So that's the first way of sharing is from a file within your OneDrive. The next area we're going to look at is SharePoint. Now, SharePoint contains department and faculty intranet sites. And on the left hand side, if you choose faculty navigation, you'll go to a landing page showing all of the different sites which are available. These sites contain documents and information. And I suggest you go and find your own faculty or your own department. So I'm going to go into the support and academic services site. And within each of those faculty sites, you'll see a set of sub sites, one for each department. These sites are normally administered centrally or by somebody within the department, and you can set permissions either to give people read-only access to documents or to have read-write access if that's what is required. So SharePoint is a great place to store information that may stay the same over a long period of time or be accessed by a large group. So that's SharePoint and OneDrive. What we're going to look at finally is Teams. Now Teams is a new set of collaboration spaces, and you can belong to as many teams as you want. So on the left hand side, I've got two teams and within each team, there are some channels. In the general channel, you'll find a conversation space and also a space to share files. So you can see in the conversation space, there's a poll that's happening there. And this is a great way to have a dialogue on an ongoing basis with your team. But we're going to focus on files. So in here, this is just like the OneDrive you saw a minute ago. But in this case, it's shared with read write access for everybody within that team. You can go and edit that document and you can choose to edit it right within the team if you want so it doesn't open up on a new tab. And as I say, the important difference is in SharePoint, you may have read write access for some and read only access for others. Whereas if you create a team, all of those team members will have read and write access to those documents. On the left hand side, you'll see there's a tab for files that will also show you your OneDrive and any team spaces that have files in that you belong to. And the last thing to point out is within a team, you can even add cloud storage from a different area. So you may have a departmental SharePoint site and want to link to it from the team. Or also you might have research data saved in box and you can also link that into that team storage area. So quick summary, we've looked at OneDrive, SharePoint and Teams. You can launch all of those directly from the Office 365 waffle, which is the button in the top left hand corner. All we've really been able to do in this video is give you very quick demos and quick explanations of what the different document and collaboration spaces are within Office 365. The best way to learn them is to come to a training course or ask to speak to one of the Office 365 champions. But hopefully this final slide will give some clarity on the three areas. So OneDrive for Business should be for your own work files, making them accessible from anywhere and is great for work in progress, maybe working with one or two colleagues. SharePoint provides departmental or faculty intranet sites within Office 365. They're likely to stay the same for long periods and you can either give people read only or edit rights to those documents. And those SharePoint sites are going to be managed centrally. With a team, you can set one of those up yourself for either a small team or a large team. They're great for communicating and sharing documents and all members of the team get edit rights on those documents. 
Now, of course, you will still have a lot of documents in your shared drive on the network. And at the moment, that's not changing. In time, though, many organizations are looking at how those traditional shared areas can be moved to the cloud, either in SharePoint or in Teams. So it's a great idea to get familiar with them now. To get started straight away, why not upload some documents to OneDrive for Business? Also, you could find your departmental or faculty SharePoint area or go and create a team. If you need help, look at the Office 365 support pages or contact your Office 365 champion. Thanks for listening.